In this video, I would like to talk about using the Tamron 15 to 30 mm lens for capturing images of the night sky and for SJ photography. Quite a few months ago, I bought that lens for capturing images of the night sky, and I was really amazed how this lens turned out to be in SJ photography. So in this video, I would like to share my experience with you and talk about a few facts you need to know about that specific lens. And after that, I would like to talk about the pros and cons of using that specific lens for capturing images of the night sky. But first of all, I would like to mention that this video is not sponsored and I'm not being paid for it. All products shown in this video were purchased by myself. But now I would like to start by introducing this specific lens to you. So in this case, we can use different focal length between 15 and 30 millimeters. That is very, very great because you can change the focal length. You can get a very, very wide field view of the night sky when using 50 millimeters, and you can get a closer view when using 30 millimeters. So that, for me personally, that's the perfect range to get great images of the night sky because you can use different focal length depending on the location and depending on the object you would like to capture. Furthermore, this lens does have a maximum aperture of f2.8. In the beginning, when I planned to buy a lens for astrophotography, it was very, very important for me to have a lens with a good maximum aperture, so with a maximum aperture of f2.8, because that's very important for me, because that helps me to collect as much light as possible, because those objects in the night sky are very dark, such as, uh, such as an example, the Milky Ways were very dark, and therefore it's very, very important to collect as much light as possible. Therefore, it was more important to have a maximum aperture of f2.8. In this case, you do have a maximum aperture of f2.8 at every focal length this lens has. Furthermore, the minimum aperture is f22. Um, that's not that important for astrophotography. So the maximum aperture is more important for us astrophotographers because we're capturing very, very dark objects, but the minimum aperture is f22. Furthermore, this lens does have an autofocuser and it does have image stabilization, which is not that important for astrophotography. Furthermore, um, this lens has a length of 145 millimeters and a diameter at the front of around 100 millimeters. So to be a bit more precise is around 98 millimeters due to the fact that this lens does have image stabilization and a maximum aperture of f2.8 at all focal length. And due to the fact that it's suitable for um, full frame sensors as well, it's very, very heavy. So it's actually more than a kilogram. So 1.1 a kilograms, which is very, very heavy compared to other lenses. So in some cases, this might be a bit difficult for a tripod, for example, because the equipment might get very, very heavy because um, the lens is already over a kilogram and when the camera is heavy as well, it might be a bit too heavy for some tripods, but I would like to talk about that one later on. Furthermore, the minimum focus distance is around uh, 0.28 meters, which is great if you would like to include a bit of foreground into your final images. But now I would like to talk about the pros and cons of using that lens for astrophotography and for normal photography, but I would like to focus on astrophotography because um, that's what this video is about. So first of all, about the pros. So a big advantage of that lens is the maximum aperture of f2.8 at all focal length. That's very, very great because you can capture a lot of light and different focal length. And that's very, very important, especially when capturing those very dark objects in night sky. And that's, so that's definitely a big advantage I really, really like about that lens, and especially when using that one for SJ photography. Furthermore, this lens is as well suitable for full frame sensors. Um, so a lot of astrophotographers are using full frame sensors because that helps you to have less noise in your final results, which is important in astrophotography because those objects are so dark. So even when using camera with an APC sensor right now, you can buy that lens and still upgrade your camera to a full frame sensor in the near future. So it's definitely something that's possible. And that was um, why I made the decision to buy that lens because I'm currently thinking about uh, buying a full frame sensor in the future. Uh, so a camera with a full frame sensor, and therefore this is definitely a great lens um, that I would like to use in the future as well. Furthermore, this lens does have good sharpness even in the corners and edges. So I've talked to other people who are using that specific lens for astrophotography. Some do have problems with sharpness, but in my case, I'm really, really happy with how the images turned out to be in astrophotography. So even in the edges and corners, um, it seems like the image is still very sharp. So I um, think that this is definitely a pro, but it seems like there might be differences between these lenses. But in this case, I do not have problems with 
sharpness in the edges. Furthermore, a big advantage is the image stabilization. It's not that important for astro photography, but still I'm using that lens quite a lot for daylight photography as well. In this case, especially when capturing images when it's already a bit darker, um, image stabilization is great because it allows you to use a long exposure time. So um, I'm using this image stabilization quite often. In astro photography, it's not necessary. Furthermore, there's an aspect I really like about that lens and that is the good image quality. So far, I've captured a lot of images with that lens and I'm really, really happy with how the image quality of that lens turned out to be. Furthermore, there are a few disadvantages of using that specific lens for astrophotography and now I would like to talk about these disadvantages. So the very first one is that it's very, very heavy. So as I mentioned, over a kilogram. And that's definitely not that good because some tripods are not built to carry that heavy equipment. So when planning to buy that lens, definitely make sure to check whether your uh, tripod can carry that um, camera all night long. In astrophotography, this aspect is even more important because we are planning to capture images with a longer exposure time. And it's very important that the camera is not moving. And especially when um, your camera or the lens is very, very heavy, uh, it might cause um, the, the tripod to move. And that's definitely a problem because then you will get star trails in the final results. So I personally really like to capture time-lapse videos of night sky. In this case, it's very, very important that the telescope is not moving in the course of the night. So it's important that the telescope is in the exact same position for a few hours, so sometimes eight hours, for example. Furthermore, uh, disadvantage is a bit of vignetting. So in my case, uh, I do not have that much of problems with vignetting, but other astrophotographers mentioned that they do have problems with vignetting. So I'm using an APC sensor, therefore it's not that relevant a problem, but still you can see in the sample images, uh, so in the sample image right in the background, that there is a bit of vignetting, it's not that problematic, but when using a full frame sensor, that might be a bit more difficult to deal with vignetting. I'm not sure about that one because I'm not using a full frame sensor. So this is everything I would like to mention about that specific lens. In general, I'm really, really happy with how this lens turned out to be. So in the beginning, I thought about different lenses for astrophotography and I made the decision to buy that specific lens. And I'm really, really happy that I bought that specific lens because the maximum aperture is great. The optical quality is great. I can even use it for daylight photography because it does have an autofocuser, image stabilization. So in general, I'm really, really happy with the lens. For sure, it's very, very heavy, the lens, which is a disadvantage here and there, but still, I would really, really recommend that lens. If this video and this guide was helpful to you, I would really, really appreciate a like and a subscription. Otherwise, thank you so, so much for watching and until next time. Clear skies, Felix.